uh, talk a little more about one of the things I said in the first video, decision making. And we know that we have decision makers outside the organization, investors and creditors, and decision makers inside the organization. And this is, you could pretty much argue that a decision maker is anybody who works inside the organization because everybody's got to make a decision at some point. When we talk about decision makers, we're really talking about the levels of management, lower level, mid-level, and upper level. And we're going to see that the types of decisions they make vary by level. So let's start at a very high level, planning. These are the top level managers. They specify the goals for the organization and broadly how to achieve them. Not, not operationally as in day to day and you're going to do this at this time and this at this time, but broadly how to achieve them. And they develop short-term and long-term budgets to match the short-term and long-term plans. A short-term budget is anywhere from a week to a month to a quarter. Longer term might be a year to two years. And going out any further doesn't make a lot of sense because so many things change in the world so quickly. We're going to say more about this in Chapter 9. You're going to see a lot of budgets and a lot of planning in Chapter 9. So let's move on to what we do every day. This is your mid-level to low-level managers. Implement the plan. I once worked for a construction company, and above the door on the way out of the construction trailer was a sign that said, Plan the work, then work the plan. And this is what you're doing here. Implementation is working the plan. Directing and motivating day-to-day -day operations when we say directing and motivating you're directing people you do this at this time you do that use these resources use those assets use this machine in this particular way and motivating them to do the job that the strategy lays out if your job is all about quality then you have to motivate your employees to care that's hard to do in a union environment by the way mobilizing resources and people to support plans now the bulk of the book deals with this. So we're going to start with this in chapter 2 onwards to get a good foundation in the types of financial information you need to make these day-to-day -day operations, to implement the plan, because really that's where the rubber hits the road, right? If you can't implement anything, I'll oh, plan all day long, but you're not going anywhere. And we have to know at some point in regular intervals, how are we doing? Is this even working? Is the plan unrealistic? Is it too aggressive? Is it too, too low? Is it too light? Are we beating the plan easily? So we have to measure our performance, what we actually do. We have to come up with reports that says, this is what we did this week, this is what we did last month, this is what we did last quarter. And the last step is, fine, now we compare that with what we said we would do. We compare the actual results with what we planned to do. This is all part of the controlling process. And basically chapters 9, 10, 11 get into different aspects of that process, different aspects of the control process. And you're going to have to get used to, or at least uh, get familiar with, performance reports. That's what it's all about. you got to tell someone how you're doing. Upper management has to know if their plans are being implemented properly and effectively. And this is not a one-shot deal. A plan requires an implementation. You've got to measure the performance, compare it with actual, and revise the plan if necessary. If the plan was too easy, if you're beating your numbers easily, well, then you've got, to get, you've got to raise that bar. If you're not meeting your objectives, well, maybe it's too difficult. Now, all of this must be done within the context of a cohesive strategy. What are we in business for? Think about taking a vacation. You plan your vacation, you plan the things that you want to see, but you don't plan based on expense. You don't say, I want the cheapest vacation possible. That's the backyard. You say, I want to get the most enjoyment possible within a certain budget. So we're going to go here, we're going to go there at this time and that time. So the same with a the business. They're not in business to make the cheapest possible product. They're there to make the most amount of money. And that might not be making the cheapest product. So they have the strategy is, what do we do? Who do we do it for? And how do we do it? And when we talk about what we do, there are roughly three broad classifications where every strategy kind of falls into one of these. One is called customer intimacy strategies. The other, operational excellence. You can think of Walmart as operational excellence. And um, finally, uh, product leadership. Here you can think of Apple. 
easily as for, for product leadership. Now, you may say, I've never heard of these before, customer intimacy, operational excellence, product leadership. Yes, you have, but by different names. This is quality, price, and service. Quality, price, and service. And there's an old saying in business that says, pick any of the two, but you can't have all three. Let's try to approach this planning cycle from a different perspective. Let's approach it from the perspective of the hierarchy of the organization, from high-level management right down to low-level management, and we'll map the different functions, or at least the level at which these functions occur more frequently. So let's start at the, with we have the board of directors at the top that you can already see. Actually, to be totally fair, investors should be first because they're the owners of the company. The investors elect the board of directors. The board of directors then appoints a president. The president then hires its vice presidents. VP1, VP2, all the way to VPN I put up there. So the president hires the vice presidents. Each vice president then selects whatever level of management is below them. Here I put regional managers. So the vice president of sales might select their regional managers. Regional managers, in turn, would select the next level of management down, which would be district managers. And this is how it works in an organization. The president doesn't hire everyone. The president hires the immediate reports to him or her, and those hire the ones just below them, and so on and so on. Because they have to work together, so they should be able to select the people that, that report to them and the people that are qualified to replace them as they get promoted, right? So, let's have a look at what happens here. As we move further down the organizational chart, we encounter more day-to-day -day operations. More detailed data is what we need. So we need cost information down to the product itself. As you go up the organizational chart, you don't really need that. That's a little too much detail, and if you had that detail, you could never get through it all. So you want more consolidated cost information. So we're moving away from very, very detailed information to less detailed and more consolidated, but not necessarily less useful. Each amount of information is useful for the level we're at. Remember, as we move down, we get closer and closer to those day-to-day -day decisions. Top management doesn't make day-to-day -day decisions. They make broad decisions for three months out, six months out, a year, five years. Big strategic decisions. But at the level of the store, at the level of the floor, you've got to make those day-to-day -day decisions. They are specific decisions, and of course they are goal-oriented because every decision you ask yourself, is this decision getting us closer to our goal, the goal that the top management set up, the answer is no, then there's no decision to make. Don't do it. As you move up the hierarchy, longer-term decisions, you can think of your planning coming in here, broad and strategic. We talked about strategy. What are you there for? Price, quality, service. And the president, in the end, is the ultimate decision-maker. So let's make a note of that. Here's your ultimate decision maker. And when we say ultimate decision maker, in the planning process, in, in, in setting strategy and long-term plans, this guy, he's the one that says yay or nay in the end. The board of directors, they're the ultimate approval because they approve everything that the CEO does. Okay, that's in line with the, they're there to protect the shareholders and the stakeholders. So they say, well, that's in line with what we've set out to do. That's called corporate governance. It doesn't always work that way. So, what's the big deal? Why did I do all this? Well, remember in management accounting, we talked about something called relevance. And at each level of management, you need the data that's relevant for that level. 